make the models appear from time to time, we need to make a game object that is going to control the rules of the game. So we're going to Unity, and in our hierarchy, we're going to right click, select Create Empty to make an empty game object. Okay, so we have this game object here. We're going to rename it to Game Controller, and we're going to set its position to be 0, 0, 0. Okay, just to make sure it's in the origin of the world. And in the project window, we're going to right click, select Create and C Sharp Script, and this is going to be named Game Controller. Okay, we hit Enter. Now we wait for the compilation to complete, and once it is, we're going to drag the game controller in here. Okay, so drag and drop, and there we go. Now, this game controller needs to, and I just realized that I, I've typed the name wrong, so let's make another one, okay? And anyway, the game controller needs to understand what is the mold container. We need a reference to the mold container. We do this because the game controller is going to access all of the molds, and from time to time, it is going to make one of the molds to appear. Okay, just type this right. Okay, and so we're going to make an interval. So the game controller is going to count a few seconds before it makes a mold to appear, and this velocity, okay, this time that the game controller is going to wait, is going to increase over time. So let's work on this logic. In the game controller, we're going to type public game object mole container and we're also going to type private mole we open and close brackets and type moles we do this because moles this variable is going to store an array of the mole class okay so we're going to have multiple things in this variable here we can save this we go to unity and wait for the compilation to complete okay let's also uh, move the game controller in here okay so we drag and drop it here and we need to pass the mold container in here. So we drag and drop it. So the reference for the mold container is right here. Okay. Now, how do we know, how do we get the reference to the molds? In the start method, we can just type molds equals to mold container dot get components in children. Then we pass the type mold. We open and close parentheses and then add a semicolon. Okay, and just to test that this is working, we can t we can print here debug.log moles.length. So we're going to print how many moles we were able to detect. And this value that is going to be printed in the console should be nine, as we have nine moles inside our mole container. So now if we hit the play button, we print the value nine. Okay, so we have a reference to all of the moles that are available in the game. Okay. So now, if we want to make one random mole to move up, we need to work on a logic here. So on the mole, we want to make uh, we want to create a method to make the mole to rise. So we type public void rise. We open and close parentheses and then uh, open and close curly braces. And we're going to simply type here target position. We're going to, to copy this target position setting that we did here. And instead of hidden height, it's going to be visible height. So the mold is going to appear. And in the game controller, in the start method, for example, we can type here moles. And to access one random mole in here, we are going to open and close brackets. And here we need to pass the index. Okay, so moles is an array, it contains nine moles. And the indexes are could be zero, one, two, three, four, until we reach eight. Even though it's 9, it's not from 1 to 9, it's from 0 to 8, it's 0 based, and this is a, a C-sharp definition. And to get a random index, we can just type random.range, we pass 0 as the first parameter, and moles.length as the second parameter. Okay. So as we're using two integer numbers, this random range is receiving 0 and 9 as parameters, but the numbers are going to be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. 9 is not inclusive. Okay, so the number that we pass here is exclusive. Okay, so when we do this, we access a random mole. Now we can add a dot and type rise. Okay, so we're going to call the rise method and see what happens. We save the game, we wait for the compilation to complete, and after this is done, we're going to hit the play button. And once we do, uh, apparently it didn't rise yet, so let's see what's happening here. So what's happening, and this is very common, is that we are making a mole to rise in the start method, and 
we're going to set its position in the mole in the start method as well. So the game controller is being called first and the mole is being called second and sometimes the order might flip. But we want to set the moles to be hidden before the game controller. So instead of using start, we can just rename that to awake as it's executed first. And then the game controller is going to call the rise method. Okay. So once we save this and back to the game, we press the play button and we see that one of the moles has risen. Okay, if we play the game again, then another one is going to appear. Okay, so when we do this, we need to also make the mole to wait some time and make it disappear. So in the mole, we're going to type here public float disappear duration. Let's set that as uh, half a second in the beginning. And here you're going to make a private float disappear timer. Okay, and we start it as zero. And when our mole is risen, okay, we, we want to set the timer to move to uh, disappear duration as this is going to count down. So here on rise, we set disappear timer equals to disappear duration. Okay. And in the update method, we want to make this timer to count down. To make it count down, we type disappear timer minus equals time dot delta time. And if disappear timer has reached zero, we want to make the mole to hide. So we type if disappear timer is lesser or equal than zero f, then we want to make it hide. So we're going to change this on hit method to hide. Okay, and we're going to make here a public void on hit method, just like we call in the player, and this method is going to call hide. Okay, so basically we're just doing some refactoring here. We still have the on hit method, but now it calls hide and hide this, does that. Okay, just to ensure that we're not going to replicate some unnecessary code. Okay, and here, if disappear time is less frequent than zero, we type hide. Okay, so let's save this. Now we go to Unity, we wait for the compilation to complete. And once it is finished, we're going to hit the play button. And one of the, the moles appeared and they instantly disappeared because the time is too uh, too little. Okay, so you can just go to the mole and change this to 1.25, for example. We can hit apply and it should wait longer before it disappears. Okay, so we hit play after one and one second and 250 milliseconds, the mole disappears. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to work on the logic to make the, the game controller to make molds appear from time to time. So let's do this in the next video. To make the molds appear from time to time, we need to add some variables to our game controller. So we're going to type here public float initial spawn time and let's set that to 1.5 seconds. We can change that later. Then we're going to add public float. Uh, instead of initial, let's name this minimum. And here we say actually maximum at the top. And here we say minimum spawn time. And we set this as 0.5f. Okay. We're also going to type private float spawn timer and start it as 0f. Okay, so now let's go to the update method and we want to make the spawn timer to decrease. So spawn timer minus equals time dot delta time. And if the spawn timer reaches zero, it means it's time to make one of the moles, any of them, to rise. Okay, so if spawn timer is lesser or equal than zero, we're going to move this line in here. Okay, and we want to set the spawn timer to be the spawn duration. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Once it's here, we're going to set spawn timer to be, uh, and then we're going to need to change some variables here. Okay, so this maximum spawn time, let's name it uh, spawn duration. Okay, so it's going to be one and a half seconds, and spawn timer is going to be spawn duration. That means that the timer is going to reset back to one and a half, but we also want to make this duration to be a lesser in the next time uh, the spawning is going to happen. So we can type here public float spawn decrement, and let's set that as 0.1f, so 100 milliseconds. 
And here, before we set the spawn timer to spawn duration, we're going to type spawn duration minus equals spawn decrement. So in the beginning, spawn duration is one and a half. Then it's going to decrease 100 milliseconds, so it's going to be 1.4, and it's going to be saved. And this is going to keep going until we reach the minimum value. So we need to check here if spawn duration is lesser then minimum spawn time, let's also rename this to minimum spawn duration just to make sure everything is going to be uh, is going to make sense, okay, so minimum spawn duration if it's lesser than that then we need to ensure that the spawn duration is going to be minimum, okay, so it doesn't get too, too freaky here so spawn duration is going to be minimum spawn duration, okay, so we can save this we go to unity and wait for the compilation to complete, we can also check the game controller here and once it's complete, all of the variables that we added are going to be here. So the spawn duration starts at one and a half, the decrement is 100 milliseconds, and the minimum is 0 0.5. And as we hit the play button, we have a mole. Okay, so we have another one appearing here, another one, and they're going to keep appearing. And notice that they keep appearing faster as well. Okay, so we need to be as quick as possible to try to hit as much as we can until it reaches a minimum value where the moles are going to be appearing faster. Okay, so sometimes we have four or three moles in this game and we have several variables that we can use uh, to process this hitting. Okay, so now that we did this we need to implement a score and make a game timer so we can finish the game flow. So let's save our scene just to make sure everything's okay and we do this in the next video. information about the score, we need before everything to make an interface. So to make a very simple text, we can just come to the hierarchy, right click, then 3D object and select 3D text. We're going to rename this as info text, okay? And we're going to change a few things here. The position of this info text, which is here, is going to be 0 on X, let's use 30 on Y and 100 on Z. We do this because we want to improve the definition, uh, the resolution for this text. So we want to change the font size to 100, the anchor to be middle center, and the alignment to be center. And just by doing this, if you hit the play button, you can see the text Hello World there. Okay, so you're playing the game here, but you can check the score and the time every at all times in here. Okay, so now to make a game timer, we go to the game controller and we're going to type here um, public float game timer and we set it as 30F because we want the game to last for 30 seconds in this case. Let's make 15. Okay, we later change that to uh, a larger value. In the update method we type game timer minus equals time dot delta time because the game timer is going to count down all the time. So if game timer is greater than 0F, it means that the game is running, so we're going to show uh, a certain text in here. So, first of all, we need to have a reference to the text, so we're going to add here public text mesh info text. Okay, now we save the script, we go to Unity and wait for the compilation to complete, and in the game controller we're going to grab the info text and drop in the field so we have a reference to it. So we drag and drop, and we now have a reference to the info text. And here in the game controller, we're going to type info text of text equals two. We add double quotes, and then we're going to type hit all the moles. Okay. Then backslash n time and a colon. So we're going to append the game timer, and we're going to do this by typing plus game timer. As game time is a floating point number, this, there might be too many digits, so we can just type here mathf.floor and pass game timer as a parameter. Okay, so if we save this and go to Unity and wait for the compilation, we should be able to check the timer counting down. Okay, so there we go. Now, if we hit the play button, we have hit all the moles, time, and time is decreasing. But we need to keep track of the score as well. So in the player, we're going to type here, we're going to make its variable, it's going to be public int score equals to zero. And every time we hit a mole, we're going to type score 
plus plus. So it's going to be increased by the value of 1. And in the game controller here, we're going to append another string. So we're going to hit, uh, we're going to add a, a plus sign, then the string backslash n to start another new line, score colon, another double quote, plus player dot, actually we need a reference to the player as well, so we type here uh, public player player, and here in the text we add player dot score. Okay, so let's save this. We go to Unity, we wait for the compilation to complete, and remember we need to, uh, to make a reference to the player. Okay, so there we go, we just drag and drop here. We hit the play button, and we have time 14, 13, it's decreasing, and every time we hit a mole the score increases. Okay, so this is great, okay, we already have the timer counting down, and the score is rising. However, once the time is finished, we want to print the score and make moles to stop appearing. Okay. So, if game timer is greater than zero, we are doing this. However, else, that means it's zero or less, we want to say that the game is over and what is the player's total score. So we type infotext.text .text equals to uh, game over, your score, a colon, and we append mathf.floor and we pass player.score as a parameter. Okay, so we have the game over message. And to stop the moles from appearing, we can just copy this, uh, cut this piece of code here that is used for spawning the game, and we print, we, we're going to paste it here in the game timer, greater than zero, because that means that the game is still running. Okay, so this is what we got here. Now, we can save this, go to Unity, wait for the compilation, and after we validate that this is working, we just have to work on a simple restarting logic to let the player to try to, to have a better score. Okay, so let's wait for the time to finish. Let's hit as many as we can. Maybe 10 here. Yeah, we're going to get more than that, definitely. So, time zero, and there we go. Game over, your score 15, the most stopped appearing. So, to work on restarting logic, we go to the game controller. We're going to type using unity engine dot scene management as this is used for loading different scenes okay and we're also going to type here a private float reset timer equals to 3f as we're going to wait for three seconds and here where we say game over we're going to type reset timer minus equals time dot delta time and if reset timer is lesser or equal than 0f we're going to restart our game and to restart, we're going to type scene manager dot load scene in between parentheses scene manager dot get active scene. We open and close parentheses as this is a method call dot name. So we're going to reload the scene we're currently at. We go back to Unity, wait for the compilation to complete, and to wait for uh, and to avoid having some shading issues in the Unity editor. This might happen depending on the version you're using. We can go to Window Lighting. Disable this auto checkbox and hit build so we save some lighting information, but you don't need to understand the details of this right now. We save our scene, we hit play, and now let's try a better score. So let's see how far we can get. And well, you have all the tools you need to tune this game to, to, to use whatever difficulty you think is going to be right, okay? Whatever is going to, to work well for you. So 15, okay, and after three seconds, the game restarts and we can already try again. Okay, so there we go, we have a finished whack-a-mole mechanics here. And now what we need to do to finish this game is to basically add some uh, beautiful 3D assets. So I see you in the next video.